welcome back to my channel. My name is Carleen, and I am here today to talk about a new show that I've discovered on YouTube. Now, I'm always watching new things and trying new things, and I am a real critic, so I don't like everything. Um, but I do like like shows on about relationships and stuff like that. And I found this show on Trend Central's YouTube. Um, I think the show is based in the UK and it is called Blue Therapy. So it is a social experiment where two couples go to a therapist um, and they talk to the therapist about their issues. Um, a lot of the issues are communication issues um, where there may be some kind of communication blockage or where they can, uh, how they can uh, move forward in their relationship. So the first couple that we see is Chioma, I hope I said that right, Chioma, Chioma, and Paul. Um, two uh, seems like successful people in their own right. It seems like Paul is a breadwinner, but Chioma has her thing going. She is a social media influencer and she did not say what she did, but she does have a corporate job. Paul um, does a lot of uh, corporate He's a personal trainer. He does IT. He did not want to say what he did. Um, and the second couple is Deborah and Jamel. Deborah is a 24-year-old. Um, she has her own job. She also has a couple of businesses I see um, where she sells clothing. And she had this other business. It was kind of vague. They didn't really get go into detail. But um, she does a number of things. But she also has a job. Jamel is 27. And he is... So Jamel is a personal trainer. Um, now with Chioma and Paul, you can see Chioma is this classy woman. Paul is this um, very handsome, very well put together man. So as they're talking, both of them are Nigerian. And um, as they're talking, Chioma is more vocal. And in the beginning, Chioma, when they were walking into the office, the uh, therapy office, Ch Paul voiced that he would rather have done therapy with a past or something more religious based. So Paul was already showing that he didn't really want to be there. Um, as Chioma starts to talk, she starts to talk about things that they don't, that she loves him. But there's some things that she doesn't like that she's not able to voice and she came there for help. Paul comes off as very, very arrogant. And she said that sometimes when she talks to Paul, it's very hard to get through to him. Um, her initial complaint in the relationship was that they were not spending enough time together. Like he's always with his clients. And um, even when he comes home, it seems like he doesn't have the time that she once got when they first started dating. So that was one of her first complaints. She also says whenever she tries to, you know, talk about some of the issues that they have, he gets upset and walks away, very dismissive. And you can see that in Paul because even when the therapist was asking Paul, what do you do? He's like, I don't understand the importance of what I do. She is trying to lay the foundation for some, to find out what you do so that she can lay down the background and figure out, okay, maybe this is how he deals at work and he's bringing that home. But he was just so like negative in the beginning. And so um, even at one point he walked out. So at one point in the um, interview or therapy session, Paul walks out of the therapy session because he doesn't like what she was saying. And everything that he, for some reason, I feel like he felt like he was being ganged upon, even though I believe that the um, therapist was neutral. I guess he got the impression that she, she was on Chioma's side. However, Chioma was more vocal. Paul was a little like um, reserved and kind of like uh, repressing his feelings because he didn't want to be there and he showed it. And he was being really rude and dismissive to the lady and... Um, she almost was getting annoyed by that because I think it's kind of embarrassing. It's one thing for you to do that at home, but to do it to someone else, a professional that she called on and you're acting like that, it looks bad. So he came off as super duper arrogant. Um, throughout the session, you start to see that Chioma has a little attitude too, but I can relate to that. 
Chioma is very spicy and she does defend herself. And um, when Paul walked away, she went after him and she kind of, you could see her kind of like um, bringing herself a little down to kind of stroke his ego to get him to come back into the room. And it worked. Whatever she did worked. Um, I can relate to Chioma because I'm the girl in a relationship that I feel like I had to stand up for myself. I am someone, I, I have a passion for justice. And so I always want to advocate for someone that I think is being taken advantage of or, or in a bad position. So I always do that for myself as well. And she, I believe, advocated very well for herself. Um, she got a little spicy, but I, I could appreciate that because Paul is very sarcastic. And he, his attitude throughout the whole session, you could see, provoked something out of her. And I can see that. Now, she almost starts to talk about how she believes that Paul renounces his identity in being a Nigerian. Paul no longer wants to eat Nigerian food. He he talks badly about her coming coming home and listening to her, her listening to Wiz Kid. Although he did say that he liked him, he and she enjoyed listening to Burna Boy. He kind of kind of talked down on it, and it kind of seemed like he kind of was renouncing his culture because he didn't want to eat the food anymore. But then he further lets her into the therapist into a secret that he's never told his girlfriend. And I believe they were together for about three years. That he was overweight when they met and he struggles with food and he was into a depression. He gained a lot of weight in that depression. And that's why his relationship with Nigerian food, he no longer wants to because it is very fattening. It's very unhealthy. Um, he always, he talks about palm oil and the things that they use, it's just not in moderation. And so he meal preps. So um, he meal preps a lot. And so she was saying before they met, before they moved in together, he was doing all the cooking because obviously he lived alone. Now he expects her to cook fresh food every day. And she says she doesn't want to do that. She feels like he should do it because he wants to eat the fresh food. She doesn't mind eating her Nigerian food. She likes her Nigerian food. But because of him, she's willing to eat it once a, a week. He doesn't even want to do that. And so I think once he shared with the therapist why he didn't want to eat the Nigerian food anymore... I think Chioma became pissed because I think he's never shared that with her. And in fact, she's mentioned that he hasn't shared that with her and she didn't like that. Like, why did I not know that? And so I feel like they put the food thing on the back burner, but he started to talk about her weight. And I think that is the part. So I made it up to episode four. Um, I'm brushing through episode one through four. Episode five comes on tonight. So, um, he starts to talk about, she almost starts to talk about how they haven't had, you know, in, uh, you know, in, intercourse in a while. And, um, he starts to talk about in a passive aggressive way. Well, are you counting calories actually, um, way and how heavy you are and just saying indirect things of saying that he thinks that she gains weight and that he may or may not be attracted to her. He didn't say those words, but he insinuated it. So Chioma got very upset and she walked out. And that's how episode four ended um, with their side. Now the other couple, which is Deborah and Jamel. At first, when Jamel actually brought them to the therapy session. Um, at first, when Deborah was talking, uh, she mentioned that she had never been in a relationship. She's 24. Jamel is 27. And it shows her inexperience as she's concerned. So you can see her inexperience. Um, she starts to talk about how she wants Jamel to be a provider. And she wants all these expensive gifts from Jamel. And, you know, Jamel is talking about building a future with her. He wants to marry her. He made that clear. And he also wants to buy a house. And so his spending, he has no problem spending money. However, right now, he his focus is not so much buying luxury items, but it is to build his generational wealth and buying property and setting them up so that they can live a good life. Deborah doesn't see that. Deborah thinks that because he's a guy and her father always took care of her and her sisters and they've always had the finer things in life that he should supply that for her. That she needs gifts every now and again. Um, she puts a lot of importance on expensive gifts. Um, so you can see the immaturity in her. 
So in the beginning, when Deborah was talking, I was like, okay, yeah, she's young. She doesn't really, this guy's a good guy. So as you get throughout the episode, you start to see what Deborah's talking about. So not a part, the provider part. I feel like if as a woman, it is nice if you have a man that can provide for you and can buy you luxury and gift you with luxury items. But to me, I believe that you should be able to provide that for yourself first. I think those things are not necessarily a a metric to see whether someone loves you or not. Um, that is her standard and I don't knock anyone's standard, but for me, I don't agree with that. Um, I do also see that Jamel may or may not be cheating on her because he has inappropriate conversations with women. He won't allow her to see his phone. Um, he won't introduce her to people in public. So Deborah speaks about an instance where he, um, they were out to dinner and he went to the bathroom and as he was going to the bathroom, he met, he saw someone that he knew, which just was a climate client, which was a female. And so he stopped and talked to her or whatever, but Deborah had never met the person and she didn't know who it was. So when he got back to the table, she asked him, who is that woman? And he kind of brushed it off and didn't want to tell her. So obviously when you don't want to tell me something, I'm automatically going to think it's something fishy. And she just felt like he was being shady all around. Um, she also spoke about another time about him being shady. And she said every time that she talks to him, she only gets to see him once every two weeks. So which is twice a month, which is bad if you're in a relationship. And he's always focusing on building his uh, personal training business. But she spoke about um, whenever she does talk to him for the little time that she has to spend with him, he has the Clubhouse app on. And she says she feels like he is craving attention. So Jamel is using the app to, um, to kind of quench some type of thirst that he has for attention. Um, and not only that, he blocked her on the app. So she can't really see what he's doing. But she said that she has seen what he's doing. So I don't know if she has a fake page or she's been on with a friend's page. But there's a lot of red flags here. And he keeps mentioning, oh, you've never been in a relationship. You've never been in a relationship. And I feel like he throws that in her face. And you could tell that she doesn't like when he says that. He continues to say he does never stop saying it. So um, you can tell that he is a manipulator. And I really like this show because... It points out a lot of um, societal norms and pressures that men put on women, but also that women put on men. Because I didn't understand why Deborah did not feel like she had. So, yeah. So, um, Deborah feels as if he, Jamel is supposed to provide for her. And um, I forget the exact words that she's used, but basically she's implying that he should be taking care of her financially. She said he should look after me. And, but she doesn't feel that she has to take care of him or do some of the things that society would deem women roles. She doesn't feel like she has to do any of that until she is married to him. But he has to fulfill those roles as, what a husband would necessarily would do for his wife. And so it's, it shows her immaturity, but she had a strong point, a valid point about Jamel, his inconsistencies. Like on paper, he looks great. He talks a good game, but as he continues to talk, you can tell that he is a manipulator and there is something shady going on. Um, they talk about this ticket that he had, that he hit. So yeah, so she... um. It, she shows a lot of immaturity, but she does have a point about Jamel. She talked about the ticket and that ticket where he had bought a concert ticket, but didn't tell her. And she looked in his email and saw it. He didn't want her to go to the concert because he thought the concert was like, you know, where people go to be ratchet. But he was secretly going. And then he tried to say when she confronted him in front of the therapist, because he didn't know that she knew. He lied and said, oh, I was trying to surprise you. Then it was a whole bunch of nonsense. He's a liar. He's lying and you can tell. And so it makes me wonder what he's really up to. And um, it's just interesting to watch it because it's like, um, it shows a lot of, um, and because they're African, I'm Haitian. And so I see a lot of like similarities in the way that they think men and women should be in the roles of women, women, men and women. And so it's so interesting. So 
this is like a review, a compiled review of episode one through four. I really like this show. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue to review it. There's another episode that comes out. Episode five comes out tonight. I, if you guys are interested, if I get enough response from this video, I will definitely review it because I think it's so important to talk about these things. And I'm glad that they're talking about it before. Both of these couples are not married, but they want to be. And I, I'm glad that these things are coming up before marriage because I think that people don't talk about these things. I don't know why they don't think it's important, but it is extremely important to talk about these things before marriage. Because if you have a certain standard or a certain... Um, I forgot what the word is. I just had a mind blank. But if you believe that someone should be doing something, a requirement before marriage, it should be discussed before marriage. Because I can tell that both of these women are very strong women. So if I get enough response, I will continue to review it. I will keep watching it, though. Um, I think it's it's very well done. Um, a lot of people said this is very scripted. Whether it's scripted or not, I think it does bring up a lot of discussion about gender roles. And um, I like the fact that these women are very independent. They're very new age. They're traditional, but they're not. They won't allow a man to walk all over them. They believe in the power of their voice. And that's why I think I'm drawn to this show because I, I see the women like, yeah, no. They're not taking crap from these guys, even though these guys have money and they're very affluent. A lot of women usually don't stand up to that type of guy because they don't want to lose the lifestyle. But these women can provide the lifestyle for themselves. And I, I'm drawn to that. I like that because they're, they're bosses. And even if the couples don't last, I'm okay with that. Because I'll see you in another video. Um, thanks for watching. So yeah, thanks for watching this review. I will see if I will do more. If you guys want to see more, I'll definitely do more. Um, thank you for watching it. This is a show I truly enjoy, so I wouldn't mind reviewing it. I hope more people see it. I see that it had like a million views, so it is picking up. But um, I hope more people are watching this because the dialogue to me is so powerful. Super duper 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 powerful. But thanks for watching. Once again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, share, share.